Welcome back. We have been talking about IMTA from an historical approach. We started in the East, in Asia, and we are now in the second half of the 20th century. In this period, especially in Western countries, new species were brought into culture. But also, aquaculture moved on to a monoculture system, focusing primarily on the needs of one single species. The industry continued to expand both in area and in quantity of production, and it started to work with economies of scale. A new trend to select species that are most profitable to culture was also adopted by operators in the industry. For instance, in southern European countries, this was mostly the sea bream and the sea bass. In tropical countries, shrimp was the main species. These were high-value species with high export demand. So, we are now in an industrial food system with high-tech methods and intensification of production towards more efficiency. This is essentially a system where higher production leads to lower costs. And mainly, it represents our modern time where now there is competition for major markets and the maintenance of product quality standards. However, with intensification, some problems also started to arise. For instance, eutrophication, which is the excess of nutrients in areas in close proximity to fish cages, and this can promote the growth of phytoplankton and bloom events. Also linked to dependence on a single species, produced intensively, there are natural risks associated with disease outbreaks. This is not difficult to imagine, after all, we are producing great quantities of biomass in a confined space. Also because in Western countries, the main targeted species are carnivorous species, it started to be clear that the diets were not sustainable, because wild fish was being fished to be used in the feed of aquaculture fish. There was also some controversy on genetic modified organisms and the potential risks associated with fish escapes. But what about the food system? From a food system point of view, in the 20th century, aquaculture moved on to global markets driven by the modern food system. The supply chain now works at a global scale. The production is centered in few species, as mentioned before, such as the, the sea bream and the salmon. And in this mostly intensified monoculture system, food processing is the rule and is based on modern technology. Also, branding is part of the food system. Nowadays, fish packages have health claims and there is almost a race to get certification labels. But, from the point of view of research, there was a turning point and this happened in the 70s. In 1975, John Reiter and his co-workers reignited interest in IMTA and they can be considered the grandfathers of modern IMTA for their work on what they called Integrated Waste Recycling Marine Polyculture Systems. What they were talking about was basically the farming of multiple species that can also participate as waste nutrient recyclers in a system much more similar to a natural ecosystem. So basically, IMTA was again brought to discussion and to the research talk. This was followed by three productive decades on what has been variously called polyculture, ecologically engineered agriculture and so on. But we will talk a bit more about all this in our next spot, when we finally reach the 21st century. So I hope you can join us.